Hey guys, what's up? My name is Riley, and for my first video in a long, long time, we're going to be talking about the exciting subject of motherboards, how to pick them for upgrading or building your own PC. So play that fancy new intro I spent forever making on. go out and buy a motherboard it probably helps to know what a motherboard even is so basically think of the motherboard as the heart of the computer if the CPU is the brain and that does all the processing then the motherboard is the heart which means it holds everything in the computer together you plug your graphics card into it you plug your RAM into it you plug your CPU into it and the motherboard makes it all work together and in a synchronized fashion so to pick out a motherboard I'm going to be going through several different steps, like determining your uses, the size of the motherboard you should choose, the processor socket that you need for your motherboard, the features and ports that you want in your motherboard, the quality of the motherboard you want to buy, and last but not least, where to start looking for said motherboard. So first you want to determine your uses. Are you the type of user that is just building or upgrading a PC that you're just going to use to browse the internet and maybe do some light gaming here or there or are you a heavy heavy computer user who video edits or games all the times establish where you are because that's going to help you later down the road the second thing you want to look at is the size of your motherboard first off we have the standard ATX motherboard and this is going to be for probably most users uh, it offers the most upgradability, it has the most ports in it, however it is larger, so you're going to need a larger case for it. If you have a small case, this will not work for you. And if you're not sure about that, you can always look up in your case, see how many holes and screws it has, and compare that with how many you need for a standard ATX. Uh, there's also a micro ATX motherboard, which is a little bit smaller, which also means it's not going to hold as many ports, but this is good if you want to save a little bit of money, or if you're just going for like a smaller upgrade and you're not too worried about anything else, that's really for you. And if you're going for a really small build, then I'd recommend the mini ITX motherboard. It's very small, and really you're not going to get too much use out of it. It's really just if you're trying to go for the cheapest thing you can buy or if you're trying to go for a portable build or something like that. Now I will say a mini ITX motherboard, which remember is the smallest one, will fit in a standard ATX motherboard case. They're backwards compatible like that. However, a standard ATX motherboard will not fit in a tiny case that supports mini ITX simply because it's too big. So that's something you need to be looking into and making sure that you're good on because not all cases will work for every motherboard and you don't want to get one part that's not supported by another. The third thing we're going to be talking about is the processor socket. Now this is very important. If you haven't chosen your CPU yet then you really don't need to worry about this. However if you have chosen your CPU or if you're upgrading your PC you need to make sure that the processor socket on the motherboard you're buying fits the processor that you have now. So basically you're going to see something like LGA 1150 or something like that. It's going to be LGA usually and then four numbers after that. You need to make sure that the processor that you have fits within that socket. So look up if you're going for like a 47 90k processor. I believe that's the LGA 1150 socket. You need to make sure you're buying a motherboard that supports that 1150 socket. If you don't have a processor that's 1150, then you can't get a motherboard that's 1150 because the processor's not going to fit, which means it's not going to work. So that's very important. Also make sure that you're getting a motherboard that supports the brand of the CPU you're trying to get. If you have a CPU that's an Intel processor, then it's not going to fit within an Asus motherboard because two different brands, they make their processors completely different. It's just not going to work out for you. So make sure you're looking into that. The fourth thing we're going to be looking into is the features and ports of the motherboard that you want to get. Now this can mean a lot of different things. 
So first off, we're just gonna start with the ports because personally, I think it's most important. So ports, I mean, are the things like what you plug your graphics cards into and your RAM into. You wanna make sure you have enough for the kind of build that you want. So this is going back to step number one, which is determining your uses. So if you're a heavy user, you're probably gonna want a lot of RAM, right? Well, that means you're gonna need more RAM slots to put that RAM into. And that's why it's important to make sure that when you're buying a motherboard, you're thinking about these kinds of things. You don't want to get a small motherboard that doesn't have any ports for the supplies that you want to put into it. Also, the graphics cards. If you want to run two at the same time, you're going to need two ports for your graphics card. You also want to make sure if you want to use those graphics cards synonymously, then you want to make sure that you have SLI or Crossfire capabilities into that motherboard. And that's something that you're going to have to research because it's different for every motherboard. And yeah, basically you're just going to have to Google that. Also you want to look at the features of that motherboard. So some motherboards, but not all of them, will have a Wi-Fi card built in or they'll have Bluetooth built in, which means you don't have to get an additional attachment for your computer and plug that in to get Wi-Fi or Bluetooth, which is something that really matters to a lot of people, especially if you want to try to keep a clean build. You want it built into your motherboard. The fifth thing we're going to be talking about is very, very important, and that's the quality. A motherboard, you can find some very, very cheap motherboards out there, but do you want to buy those? Probably not, because it's not going to be quality. For something that holds all your components together and makes them work together, that's something you really need to look into. Also, this can go into overclocking. If you want to overclock your CPU, which for those of you that don't know what that means, that means you just want to get some extra performance out of that processor by giving it a little bit more voltage, you're going to need a better quality motherboard. So basically, the only way you're going to know this is by typing on Google the motherboard you want and reading a bunch of reviews on it, because I can't tell you everything about every motherboard out there. But I can tell you the brands that I would recommend. Brands like Asus, MSI, Gigabyte, those are really the top three motherboard makers out there right now. So if you're going to buy a motherboard, try to look at those people first. And remember, a faulty motherboard is a faulty system. If your motherboard starts acting up, your computer's just not going to run, and it even has the potential to ruin the other parts that you have, which is definitely not something you want to do. So make sure you're getting a quality motherboard, please. Last thing we're going to be talking about is where to start looking. So in this great big world of motherboards that have been coming out since the 1970s, it, it can be a little daunting of a task to find something that suits your needs. So basically all I can tell you is you know what you want by now. If you've been following all these steps, you know what kind of features you want, you know what kind of user you are. All I can really tell you now is just go to Google, start typing in, and find something that works for you. Try to find something in your price range. You don't have to go for anything huge. You can get a really good motherboard for $100 that unless you're like a top of the line user, it will do everything you need it to do. Just make sure you're buying a board that's quality, it has the features you want, and you'll be set to go. So thanks for watching guys, I hope you subscribe and leave a like if you like the video and dislike and leave a comment if you think there's something I need to improve on and I will definitely try to improve in the next video. Once again thanks for watching guys and I'll see you in the next one.